okay so we're looking at algorithms continuation of the last lecture so algorithms and also Turing machines they start with an initial state and an input possibly empty input and an instruction which is a computation which when executed will proceed through a finite number of steps and eventually produce output and end in a final state and the transition from one state to next state is could be non-deterministic that means there, may, there could be many choices and such algorithms are known, uh, there are some algorithms which are known as randomized algorithms that means they have some random data coming in so they may make different they may give different answers but all of them will be correct and the next thing to know about algorithms is that like they are not all the same complexity some are really hard some are easy some are easy like finding the maximum in a list searching in a list some are a bit harder like sorting we'll see a lot of sorting later some are very hard like traveling salesman problem finding the cheapest route road to is a hard problem and some are really uh, impossible practically impossible for example factoring large numbers like 100 digit numbers you can multiply quickly but factoring is really hard and there's a problem hierarchy we'll look in the next slide and some problems are undecidable that means no matter how much time you have we'll never be able to get an answer this is like the halting problem of Turing machine so let's look at the problem hierarchy so the easiest problems are the set P they take polynomial time to solve and then the larger set is the set NP NP doesn't stand for non-polynomial it stands for non-deterministic polynomial so it takes polynomial time the machine could make right choices we'll see more of it when we study NP complete problems NP complete problems are a class of problems of really hard and all of them have similar complexity so if you can solve one you can solve all of them and still we are not sure if NP complete is is in P or outside P is any problem easily solvable or not if one is solvable all will be solvable and this is the big circle of problems that we have and on the top are the undecidable problems that means you may have a uh, pr program that will try to solve this problem and may never stop okay that's a hierarchy of complexity so let's look at the easy algorithm finding a maximum element given a list how do we find a maximum so first thing we do is we we'll use pseudo code because we don't really care about the programming language and not whatever syntax but just the idea of solving a problem so that's called pseudo code so let's look at the pseudo code so this looks somewhat like Pascal or in older languages. So we have a procedure and an input. It's an array of n one to n numbers a, and then we start. It set the max to be a one, and then you start looking at all the a two to a n, and you find a larger number. Then you make th that max that large number a i, and then you have a invariant. Invariant means at that point this this is true. The max is the largest in a1 to ai finally when you finish the for loop after you finish n max is the largest in the 1 to n and then we return the max so in the traditional programming uh, pseudo code we always have a begin and end so you can always find how much is inside so n4 sometimes they use parentheses in c language and in python they don't use anything it's really uh, bad practice so let's find the maximum element in running time how long does this take if the list has n elements what is n n could be any number uh, any big list finite number how much is taken in worst case worst case means given some really data and uh, different kind of data it can take a really long time and that's called the worst case and best case means the data is really nice you can really finish quickly so let's look at how long will it take in this case it just takes you to scan from 1 to n you just look at all the elements once so the best case and worst case everything is uh, order of like exactly looking at each element once and the average case this is this can be different so like you take average over all the different types of problems find the average for average time take, taken so n elements in this case average also will be the same because you have to see all the n elements so let's see so let's look at more properties algorithms all algorithms have input it could be a string or a set of numbers or whatever 
and it has an output and definiteness the steps are precisely defined correctness the algorithm always gives correct answer we are not interested in algorithms that give wrong answers and then it finishes in a finite number of time it doesn't take infinite amount of time it doesn't get stuck in a loop effectiveness effectiveness means each step must be performed in a finite amount of time it can uh, it can be done by a computer in finite amount of time and the general the, this problem is hard to define generality basically says algorithm should be applicable to all problems of a similar form it should not be just a, the problem is solved for only 5 by 5 matrix or something it should solve all matrix all sizes otherwise uh, it's not a good enough algorithm to discuss it solves only a specific problem unless it really is a, a specific application okay so let's look at the types of algorithms we'll encounter all of them in the later chapters the simplest one is deterministic that means it just proceeds step by step and comes to the an answer and the next one is randomized for large problems we'll see randomized al answers for example we have google search and the answers may be different each time but they are correct and then there are approximation algorithms these are used for hard problems so answer is close to optimal and it's good enough for uh, regular life and it will take really a lot of time to get the exact answer and then there are online algorithms like online shopping or hiring that you have to solve the problem as we come the items will come one by one and you don't get to see everything till the end and you have to decide at that point after seeing half the input like okay what is the answer they want so far it's like when you're hiring candidates you can't see everybody before you're deciding they just keep coming and then one day you decide okay i'll take the best among the last 10 or something that's a call online problem and then we need design techniques how are we going to de design algorithms it's not like pull them out of the hat or something they have a definite method to it and the methods can be classified into this type incremental incremental means you you solve the problem step by step and smaller sm and by small increments and examples are in insertion so sort selection sort and a big other big method is divide and conquer you have a big problem you divide into two parts and solve both the parts and merge the answer so the the, the algorithms in that are merge sort quick sort binary sort and they typically involve log because log is comes out of dividing it by two then we have dynamic programming what that means is many times you solve a problem and you keep seeing that problem again and again instead of solving it again and again you remember the solution and then reuse it that's called memoization so we have fibonacci number combination matrix chain multiplication knapsack problems these have dynamic solutions including spelling correction stuff we'll look at later and then there's a greedy algorithm greedy means basically as soon as you you can make the right choice at the right at the beginning only you don't have to go back and forth so the shortest path, next up problem, spanning tree and these algorithms run fast and there are a lot of algorithms for graph algorithms these are basically traversing depth first search, bed first search, traveling salesman in which case the problem is represented as a graph and the solution is a path or a some property of a graph that you are looking for and then in theory, theory we have something called reduction Reduction is used for NP completeness and problems. If you can't solve one problem but you have another problem that you can solve, you can convert first problem to second type and solve it and then convert back the results. And sometimes you have to use brute force for combinatorial problems where like you are arranging a puzzle and you have to keep trying all combinations till you find the right answer. Okay, so these are different techniques and a lot more as we go along, we'll see. Okay, so next thing to look at is complexity. What does complexity mean? Time complexity and space complexity. Time complexity specifies the running time depends on the size of the input. So in that case, we have a function which maps the size n input to the time t. It's independent of the type of the computer. Whether you use a PC or a supercomputer, this complexity is a theoretical idea, not really a practical thing, but it gives you an idea the kind of algorithm you're trying to solve and similar to time complexity is space complexity given the input how much space will you need to to solve the problem and some problems take very little extra space like finding the max and some take a lot of space for arranging sub solutions and then in complexity the next question is the asymptotic performance 
what does that mean so the thing is like algorithm may take some fixed amount of starting time but then as the problem increases what is the how does the problem size affect the algorithm and algorithm behave as a problem uh, problem gets larger and larger and then we do keep calculating the time as a function of the problem size how much time does it take double the time or triple the time as you double the problem size and the memory does the memory double triple on this remain constant so we have the notation the big O notation like order n running time order n square n log n so we'll see this for different algorithms and see which are practical which are not practical and for what values of n you'll see it later on okay that's the end of this class